Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Deggy again, back with another Disney Lurkana card of the day. And today's card of the day is going to be none other than our Ruby Aladdin, Aladdin, <laughs> Heroic Outlaw. Now, this Aladdin costs 7 ink, but he is inkable. So again, he can be placed into your inkwell. He has 5 strength, 5 willpower, and he has 2 lore. He has 2 features or 2 abilities. Uh, his first is he is a shiftable character, so he has shift five and again that means you can pay five resources instead of the seven to play this Aladdin on top of one of your other characters named Aladdin. Now as of right now as a side note we only have one other Aladdin he is Emerald however if you do have that other Aladdin in play you can play this Aladdin the Ruby one for only five resources instead of seven. But where this Aladdin shines, where he just dominates the field, is his other ability. His other ability is called Daring Exploit. It reads, during your turn, whenever this character banishes another character in a challenge, you gain two lore and each opponent loses two lore. So it's similar to Mulan where Mulan has to challenge and banish something to get the effect and just like Mulan it has to happen on your turn so if there is an exerted Aladdin um you can you can challenge it and even if it banishes one of your characters you don't lose lore because you are challenging the exerted Aladdin the effect has to go off on your opponent's turn regardless this ability is absolute bonkers. Honestly, this is probably the best card we've seen so far. Because of the lore point swing, um, he's just able to either help you secure a victory or, or to come back from a losing position. Because there are some games where even if you're able to do some things, play some characters, maybe get a challenge or two, you, there's nothing you can really do. Your opponent is just too far ahead in lore. But with this Aladdin, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how far ahead your opponent is because you're able in a 1v1 setting to get a four point lore swing. And what I mean by that is if he is able to challenge a character and banish it on your turn, your opponent's gonna lose two lore and you're gonna gain two lore. That, so that is a four point swing. Even if your opponent is threatening victory, or they've really run away with the game and you're really behind, after just a couple challenges with this Aladdin, you are no longer behind. And your opponents say no longer running away from, they're no longer running away with the game. You are able to come back and to keep yourself into the game. You know, you're, you're able to keep yourself in there and hopefully well try to win. Messing with an opponent's lore I think is going to be a very, very powerful mechanic. I don't think we'll see a lot of it. I know personally it was a feature I did not want to see. I thought it was kind of like a feels bad where I have set my characters out to quest. I have gathered my lore. You know, you have set your characters out to quest. You have gathered your lore. We have put our characters in harm's way essentially because of the challenge mechanic where you can only challenge and exert a character. We have done this to further our victory and it would feel bad to lose characters and then also to lose your lore i didn't like that i didn't like that you know uh you know might maybe my strategy is to get as much lore quickly you know try to overrun my opponent or it's to do this or it's to do that i just didn't really want it to be messed with kind of like it'd be kind of like uh prizes in pokemon where you know i can take my prize cards and you can't really add you know more prize cards for me to take. I don't think there's any cards that do that. There might be new ones, I'm not sure, but back when I played, um, you couldn't add like more prizes. Now, when I did play Duel Masters, Duel Masters, it has a similar mechanic uh, where you had shields. So your opponent had five shields. You had to attack them five times to get rid of the five shields. And then one more time to hit them directly to win. But there was a mechanic where you could put like the top card of your deck into your shield zone. But that was something you did because you're adding protection for yourself. 
So your opponent's like, oh, they've, you know, their defenses are up, up more. I have to take out one more shield. And that wasn't very common, though. There weren't very many cards that did that. But it did help you, you know, it could help you come back from, like, a losing position. You just got a little bit extra resources. So I guess in that regard, that wasn't terrible. But it wasn't something that was, like, taken from me. Like, I earned this, and your opponent's like, no, nah, no, nah, I earned it now. So I didn't like the idea, right? But, you know, as I've played... I've seen other people play, we see the cards. I think that messing with an opponent's lore isn't a terrible thing. I think it adds an extra dimension to the game, and I think it's something you have to really keep in mind. And because of that, I don't think we're going to see a lot of cards that do mess with lore, and if we do, they're going to be A, really powerful and high-costed, like this Aladdin, or if it is a character it could be on the opposite where it's low cost but really easy to mess with could be like a one uh one cost like zero one character that when it quests you actually just steal one lore from your opponent or something like that so i could see that but i know you know off on a tangent it's not exactly about aladdin but honestly there's not a lot to say because this aladdin is absolutely bonkers uh, he is probably, right now, for all my rankings and all the ones I'll do in the future, probably my only 10 out of 10 card. Because he he really is that good. I do understand there's not other Aladdins that we can shift off of. And we haven't seen a lot of Emerald cards. So it's hard to justify sitting here and saying, well, you could just, you know, you have to play Emerald Ruby. If you want to play this Aladdin because the Emerald Aladdin is the only other Aladdin card we have but I would like to point out that Aladdin card the green the, the Emerald Aladdin is really good he can just sit there on your side of the field unexerted and your opponent cannot challenge him your opponent cannot target him with spells or removal there's nothing they can do and when you have five resources you can play this Aladdin and then instantly start challenging and instant instantly start questing that's really good Emerald does have some really good characters for questing as well with like Cruella de Vil and Cheshire Cat you're able to get uh, your say your dragon fires back by playing Lady Tremaine um, you can force challenges with that new the beast is mine card which is what I talked about um, in one of my other card of the day videos so pretty good now i do think we're, we're probably going to see some really solid emerald cards we do need to see some more we also need to see some ruby cards probably together they're going to be really good they are in a starter deck there is a starter deck that's ruby and emerald so obviously there's something going on there so overall though i mean i there's again not really a lot to say right now this aladdin is a 10 out of 10 card he he really he's absolutely fantastic he has like no downside he is going to get removed um, so at least in that regard, he is going to draw resources from your opponent as soon as he comes down. You just have to realize that he is, he is a huge threat once he hits the table. You do want to try to fire him off right away. Um, so you do want to try to shift him and then get the attack off. Uh, but if you can't, if you feel like, you know, you can put him down and then threaten with your other characters, that's also a really good idea. Um, if you play him in a multiplayer game, you have to realize that you have become the public enemy and everybody is going to attack you. Well, they're going to try to challenge your characters. Yes, he, he definitely is super good in multiplayer. There's more targets, you know, that are going to be exerted. And even if he gets just one attack off, that's a minus six for all of your opponents, like, you know, collectively. And that's really good. It could help. It could help, you know, other opponents too, if somebody is ahead. And you could be like, hey, let me attack your character with my Aladdin so that this guy over here loses two lore and he doesn't win on his next turn. Like, yes, you're going to lose the character. Yes, you're going to lose two lore, but you're not going to lose the game. Like, hear me out. Let's do this. You know, something like that. So your opponent could be like, okay, well, I guess I'll quest with, you know, this character. And that way on your turn, you can take him out or whatever. It's good politics. So... Yeah, he's absolutely brutal in multiplayer, but you got to realize he, you're going to be targeted. He might be, I was I was just thinking he might be a little safer in multiplayer, but probably not. Someone's going to want to remove him. You have you have two other opponents, you know, other than your your other normal one. Like, so, I mean, depending on how many people you have, I suppose. But 
we'll say you have three opponents, three people who are going to be looking at this card and thinking, yeah, that's not going to stay on the field. But in a 1v1 setting, you know, depending on who, you, who you're playing against, like if you're playing against, say, Amethyst and Steel, as of right now, Steel would have to dedicate a lot of resources to remove this Aladdin. They would need to be holding a Smash and a Fire the Cannons in order to get rid of him. Yeah, sure, they could also challenge into him and then use like a Smash or a Fire the Cannons. But in order to challenge into him, he needs to be exerted. And if he's exerted, he probably already took out one of your characters. He's really good. He's, he's, he's an absolutely fantastic card. I really don't see any drawbacks, like anything that's like a true negative. Yes, he does cost seven resources, um, but it's also kind of like the, the Steel Simba. The Steel Simba also costs seven resources and he's very scary. So once he comes down, you're going to be looking at him and thinking, how can I deal with this Simba? Like, I, if I quest with anything, it's going to be challenged and banished. Now, this Aladdin, yes, does lower your lore count, but it's the same idea where he he, he could come down for seven. You look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, that's a scary card. How am I going to deal with this? Even if you do play him for seven resources, if you have a decent board state with a couple other characters in play, just realize your opponent's going to be looking at the Aladdin and not your other characters. Overall, again, an absolute 10 out of 10 card. I think he's I think he's going to be one of the defining cards of the first set. I do also think, say, uh, Sapphire... I'm sorry. Well, Sapphire Aurora. Uh, Ward Aurora is also going to be a one of the like set one defining cards just because she's just so good. Um, and also some... I think Pascal. Actually, Pascal, maybe some Amethyst cards. But truly, truly, I think this Aladdin might be the king of the set he's just he's just so good it would be really crazy to see a card stronger than this aladdin but in a way i'm actually really excited to see if there is a card that's stronger than this aladdin because it'll just bring more powerful cards to the table so that's my analysis i think this aladdin is fantastic it makes me want to play ruby like really bad i do still want to play ruby but i actually personally am eyeing steel and Amber together because their Rockstar Stitch is really good. Oh, Rockstar Stitch is another, is also going to be another set one metagame defining uh, card, like format defining. Like it's, it's going to be, you know, Stitch, Aurora, this Aladdin, I think are just going to be, you know, out there. And it's, they're shiftable characters. Apparently shift characters are bonkers. So there you go. 10 out of 10 card, play him and all your Ruby decks and just enjoy. So... Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. It means a lot. You know, I'm trying to get these out every day. Um, I'm, I don't have like the best recording area, I suppose. And my girls are in school and uh, there are a lot of days when nobody's here um, and I can find the time to record. And then some days there, you know, uh, there are people here and I can't record, but it is what it is. Hopefully in the summer I can do a bit more. It might set up something. Who knows? But still trying to do every day. And if you're listening, I appreciate it. You're awesome. Thanks for enjoying this card game with me. It, it is a really good card game. I am super looking forward to playing it. Like with the actual cards, seeing everything. It's going to be great. But thanks for watching. It means a lot. I appreciate it. You stay safe out there. Make good decisions. And I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye.